Rule 59. Receivership. Section 1. Appointment of Receiver. Upon a verified application, one or more receivers of the property subject of the action or proceeding may be appointed by the court where the action is pending, or by the Court of Appeals, or by the Supreme Court, or a member thereof, in the following cases. When it appears from the verified application and such other proof as the court may require that the party applying for the appointment of a receiver has an interest in the property or fund which is the subject of the action or proceeding and that such property or fund is in danger of being lost, removed, or materially injured unless a receiver be appointed to administer and preserve it. When it appears in an action by the mortgagee for the foreclosure of a mortgage that the property is in danger of being wasted or dissipated or materially injured and that its value is probably insufficient to discharge the mortgage debt or that the parties have so stipulated in the contract of mortgage. After judgment, to preserve the property during the pendency of an appeal or to dispose of it according to the judgment, or to aid execution when the execution has been returned unsatisfied or the judgment obligor refuses to apply his property in satisfaction of the judgment or otherwise to carry the judgment into effect. Whenever in other cases it appears that the appointment of a receiver is the most convenient and feasible means of preserving, administering, or disposing of the property in litigation. During the pendency of an appeal, the appellate court may allow an application for the appointment of a receiver to be filed in and decided by the court of origin and the receiver appointed to be subject to the control of said court. Section 2. Bond on Appointment of Receiver Before issuing the order appointing a receiver, the court shall require the applicant to file a bond executed to the party against whom the application is presented in an amount to be fixed by the court to the effect that the applicant will pay such party all damages he may sustain by reason of the appointment of such receiver in case the applicant shall have procured such appointment without sufficient costs and the court may in its discretion at any time after the appointment require an additional bond as further security for such damages. Section 3. Denial of Application or Discharge of Receiver The application may be denied or the receiver discharged when the adverse party files a bond executed to the applicant in an amount to be fixed by the court to the effect that such party will pay the applicant all damages he may suffer by reason of the acts, omissions, or other matters specified in the application as ground for such appointment. The receiver may also be discharged if it is shown that his appointment was obtained without sufficient costs. Section 4. Oath and Bond of Receiver Before entering upon his duties, the receiver shall be sworn to perform them faithfully and shall file a bond executed to such person and in such amount as the court may direct to the effect that he will faithfully discharge his duties in the action or proceeding and obey the orders of the court. Section 5. Service of Copies of Bonds, Effect of Disapproval of Same The person filing a bond in accordance with the provisions of this rule shall forthwith serve a copy thereof on each interested party who may accept to its sufficiency or of the surety or sureties thereon. If either the applicant's or the receiver's bond is found to be insufficient in amount, or if the surety or sureties thereon fail to justify, and a bond sufficient in amount with sufficient sureties approved after justification is not filed forthwith, the application shall be denied or the receiver discharged as the case may be. If bond of the adverse party is found to be insufficient in amount or the surety or sureties thereon fail to justify, and a bond sufficient in amount with sufficient sureties approved after justification is not filed forthwith, the receiver shall be appointed or reappointed as the case may be. Section 6. General Powers of Receiver 
subject to the control of the court in which the action or proceeding is pending, a receiver shall have the power to bring and defend in such capacity actions in his own name, to take and keep possession of the property in controversy, to receive rents, to collect debts due to himself as receiver or to the fund, property, estate, person, or corporation of which he is the receiver, to compound for and compromise the same, to make transfers, to pay outstanding debts, to divide the money and other property that shall remain among the persons legally entitled to receive the same, and generally to do such acts respecting the property as the court may authorize. However, funds in the hands of a receiver may be invested only by order of the court upon the written consent of all the parties to the action. No action may be filed by or against a receiver without leave of the court which appointed him. Section 7. Liability for Refusal or Neglect to Deliver Property to Receiver A person who refuses or neglects upon reasonable demand to deliver to the receiver all the property, money, books, deeds, notes, bills, documents, and papers within his power or control, subject of or involved in the action or proceeding, or in case of disagreement as determined and ordered by the court, may be punished for contempt and shall be liable to the receiver for the money or the value of the property and other things so refused or neglected to be surrendered, together with all damages that may have been sustained by the party or parties entitled thereto as a consequence of such refusal or neglect. Section 8. Termination of Receivership Compensation of Receiver Whenever the court, motu proprio or on motion of either party, shall determine that the necessity for a receiver no longer exists, it shall, after due notice to all interested parties and hearing, settle the accounts of the receiver, direct the delivery of the funds and other property in his possession to the person adjudged to be entitled to receive them, and order the discharge of the receiver from further duty as such. The court shall allow the receiver such reasonable compensation as the circumstances of the case warrant to be taxed as costs against the defeated party or apportioned as justice requires. Section 9. Judgment to include recovery against sureties. The amount, if any, to be awarded to any party upon any bond filed in accordance with the provisions of this rule shall be claimed, ascertained, and granted under the same procedure prescribed in Section 20 of Rule 57.